Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial about calculated parameters in Hydroview. In the next few minutes we're going to look through four parameter types and walk through the process of setting a couple of them up. At the end of the video you'll be able to create, view, and edit any kind of calculated parameter. One note before we make any calculated parameters is that you cannot ever delete or rename a calculated parameter. The renaming of it will actually change how it sits in the database and we don't ever want people to be able to delete their data and maybe lose something that's really critical. So we can only ever make them inactive. and I'll show that later on. So to create a new calculated parameter or view any that you have, click on the capital sigma over here on the side here. We can expand this and see that it's calculated parameters. So let's head over to here. Now I haven't added any yet, um, but I'm just going to click on add parameter. And for our first example here, let's do one that's a sum and difference. So let's pick a name for our calculated parameter. And let's pick sum and difference. And then let's make this one about, let's say, temperature. So we go to the next page. We can see here we're going to pop up a list of all of the locations that have temperature in this entire area of the map that we've selected. Let's pick two of them. How about we say the Green River near La Barge and near Green River. Those will be our two. So you can see as I click these that it adds them over here to our calculation. So we want to be in the mountain time zone, so we're in the perfect spot here. We just want to have this be subtracted from that. So all I do is set that to there. Now the calculation will be A minus B. And the new parameter will get calculated every four hours. And we can select all the different options that we have for how many, uh, how often our parameters get calculated. So I think I'll do it every two hours and I will click save and this shows up back in our list here. So for all new incoming data we'll see that this will calculate the difference and it'll show up right back here on this data page alongside all the rest of our temperature graphs as a difference uh, with these new units here. So that's setting up sums and differences. We think that mainly they'll be used for differences at this point, but we can do more complicated formulas as well. Let's go back to calculated parameters and talk about the rest of them. So if I go and add a different one here. We have a couple other ones. We have transformations. Those are linear transformations where you could do an MX plus B, you know, convert a turbidity to TSS, convert a uh, raw fluorescence into a cell count based on uh, the equations for your body of water. Um, so that's pretty simple there. We also have moving average, which I'll talk about real briefly here. We can actually do an average on it. One of the best ones that we could do here would be on temperature. Uh, if you wanted to have, in particular, an alarm maybe that worked off of a moving average, what you could do is actually calculate a moving average across this here. So we default to five data points to average. It's the last five, but you can go up to 100 or as few as two. Um, to just sort of smooth out that data if it's particularly spiky. This is really useful for our, our customers that use turbidity. That's a notoriously sort of spiky measurement that can be very um, transient in terms of the conditions in the water. You know, something floats right in front of your sensor right when you take a measurement, you get a big spike. Um, so if you had a mission critical kind of alarm that you wanted to do, this would be a great way of making sure that it triggers only when you had a consistent change in your data. So I'll go ahead and save this. So now that we have two of these parameters here, let me show you how you might go about editing one of these. You can see here that maybe I've decided that I wanted to actually add these two together here. That's as easy as just clicking the menu on the side and just changing it like that. But it's important to note that any changes that you make in editing a calculated parameter do not affect any data in the past. Only new data that's created as incoming data comes into the system. Our last type of calculated parameter is total flow. That would just be used to take a flow rate and totalize it up into an actual amount of water that has flowed through a given weir or whatever it may be. Uh, I don't have a good example of it right here, but uh, very useful to totalize up across custom intervals. So that's all we had for this video here today. Thanks for staying with us while we showed you all these different calculated parameters and happy using a PyTribune.